Whether it's sailing on a rainbow cruise ship, exploring dynamic maps, or pitting many characters from the Nintendo universe up against each other, Super Smash Bros. will entertain even the most novice gamers. This is because of its infinite replayability using some great heroes like Mario, and some final Smash characters like Giga Bowser, and some hidden gems like the yellow colored hedgehog known as Super Sonic. It is nearly impossible to tackle all of the science behind this game, but we will try here on the Science of Super Smash Bros. First off, Mario is the most popular video game character in history, but he is only the 22nd most played character in Super Smash Bros. Mainly because he's horrible to play with, being ranked in the bottom tier of the official ranking system of Super Smash Bros. So why is Mario so bad? Well, Mario tends to lose his stock lives pretty quickly because of his small and light frame. This makes it easy for bigger enemies to knock him back and make him fall off the screen. But that got me thinking, how far would Mario have to fall for him to actually be knocked out? In each level within Super Smash Bros, there are boundaries called blast lines, and when a player crosses any of these lines, they are immediately knocked out and lose one stock life. And even though these blast lines differ in every single level, the average distance that a blast line exists off camera is the equivalent of about 10 feet in real life. And when you take into account that a player is launched about 10 feet into the air during a knockout, a player will usually fall about 20 feet. And you would think that a superhero would be able to survive a 20 foot fall, right? I mean, that's like falling from the top of a giraffe. Like, even humans can survive falls of 50 feet or more. So maybe the reason why characters lose lives in Super Smash Bros is not because they fall tremendous distances, but because they enter a deadly environment. But an environment that can make you disintegrate instantaneously, like the one in Super Smash Bros, would have to be extremely harsh. Almost supernatural. Let's take the vacuum of space for example. Now many people would consider this to be a very deadly environment, and for good reason. But the average human can actually survive up to one minute unprotected in the vacuum of space. Yeah, even space isn't as deadly as the boundaries in Super Smash Bros. But I can think of something that is. There is a super acid called fluoroantinomic acid, and if you haven't heard of it, it's probably because it might be a little bit unsafe for your chemistry class. This chemical is 100 nonillion times stronger than stomach acid, and can eat through pretty much every substance in existence, except for Teflon, apparently. This acid is so strong that if, for whatever reason, you were to jump into a giant pool of it, you would be dissolved in a fraction of a second, making it a viable candidate for what composes the boundaries in Super Smash Bros. But in order to hit a player onto one of these boundaries, you're going to need to do a lot of damage first. And a good way to do this is with the character Bowser and pressing A and forward at the same time. If executed properly, a fully charged Bowser headbutt can do 48% damage on a single hit, making it the most damaging basic attack in the game. And if you were to land enough of these basic attacks, you could eventually rack up 999% damage on your opponent, which is the most that can be done on a character in the game. This amount of damage is the limit that a player can take while still being able to survive. So then what would it be like to have 999% damage and be on the limit of human survival? Well, a rough estimate for human survival is that your body could be cooled down from 37 degrees Celsius to 16 degrees Celsius, or you could be stung by 2,000 bees, or punched in the gut by a professional boxer. 800 times. If none of these options look that appealing to you, well, I don't blame you. So you might want to try grabbing a heart container to heal 100% damage, or a Starman to avoid damage altogether. By obtaining a Starman, you become invincible for 10 seconds, so what could you do in 10 seconds? You could run 100 meters if you're Usain Bolt, you could travel 3 million kilometers if you were light, but what you actually do in 10 seconds is travel a measly 
8,100 kilometers. This is because you are on the Earth, which is rotating around the Sun at 30 kilometers per second, and the Sun is rotating around the center of the Milky Way at 230 kilometers per second. And the Milky Way is hurtling through space at 550 kilometers per second. So in 10 seconds, you actually travel about the same distance from New York to Moscow. One more thing that I would like to mention about Super Smash Bros is that it actually wasn't intended to be Super Smash Bros. It was originally called Dragon King the Fighting Game and featured faceless generic looking characters instead of the Nintendo characters that we know and love today. So let me know in the comments below what your favorite Super Smash Bros character is and why. Anyways, for now, try not to get knocked out by falling off any giraffes. You damn giraffes. And check out the channel Conjecture because he has some interesting science videos that you guys might like. The link is in the description below. So click here if you want to see another science video and click here because it is the awesome button and you're going to want to click on that button. And I will see you next time.